I think we're ready to get started making some images in Poe. We're going to use Poe because it contains many different image generation programs within it. So for our one subscription price, we get access to, I'm just going to arbitrarily say, 10 different types of image generators that all have their own strengths at what they produce. Today, we're going to learn two of them. They're both going to share similar thoughts as to how we get an image out of them, but they're both going to have a few nuances that they both need to, you know, in order to work best. So first, I'm going to show you how to access the image generation bots on Poe, because that's where we're going to start too. Start with the Explore tab, and once you have that, you're going to look for the Image Generation tab, which is located in that section where you can kind of click to filter. See, each of these clicks brings a new filter of bots. Look for ones that say official. Those are the ones to start with. They're the most trustworthy in that you know Poe has your back when you use those bots. Ones that don't say official, such as this one, blog or photo create E. I don't know where that is going. I don't know who controls it. I don't know what they're doing with the data it's given. So I don't trust it. Poe, official, trust. That's my perception of this world. I'm going to show you a couple different image... I'm going to stop. I'm going to load up something that has some images that I made with AI plus one real image. So let's look at that together. And there's one real image in this batch. So I'm going to move through them, give you a little bit of time to look at each of them. Most of these are AI, except for a single one of them, which is a real photograph that I took from a website called Pixabay, which is where people can upload their photos for others to use for free. Because not every photo you find on the internet can be used for free. Most images actually have a copyright that is generated at the moment they are put on the internet and owned by the person who put them on the internet. Using that person's copywritten photo can get you into trouble, so don't do it if you can avoid it. Technically, these image generators are a can of worms similar to that problem because we don't know everything they ingested in order to do this magic output that they do. There could be so many copywritten images in the basis for the, the, these image generator models that technically every time you make an image, you could be effectively taking a hundred tiny pieces from a hundred different other people's copywritten images to make the new image. So that's a primer slash disclosure. There is no totally safe image generator right now with regards to copyright for the most part. There's always going to be some gray area because the law doesn't know how to treat this yet. Image generated uh, by AI is a, a gray area at the moment. Take a look at these images again, all these great dogs. Which one of these dogs is real? I'm going to save you the time. I'm going to tell you, here's a, well, actually, I'll just go straight to the real one. That's a real dog. Every other one of these dogs was made using Poe with the same exact set of words. I just asked Poe for a boxer dog with certain qualities and different image generators within Poe gave me these different outputs. Let's take a look starting at what I feel is the bottom of the barrel in terms of realistic images that can be made with an AI image generator in Poe. I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom. This is created with DAL E3, and that is an image generator, image generator that excels at creating illustrated images, but it does not, in my opinion, excel at doing photorealistic images. So if your goal is a, an artistic interpretation of a subject, try DAL E3 to start. Moving on up, there's, a, there's one called Flux, and there's one called Flux Schnell, which is, a, uh, I guess, a faster version of Flux. When it's a faster version of an image generator, that generally means the image will be less detailed. The faster that image gets made, the less time the computer's spending building it and putting beautiful pieces on it. So you can kind of tell this image was made fast comparatively to the image made with Flux Dev, which is a development version for super nerds that are trying to really learn the program. So here's Flux Schnell. 
Here's flux dev. Those are the same program back end with just different parameters working behind the scenes. I believe flux dev looks far better than flux schnell. <laughs> Moving on, I'm moving to Ideogram. This is a, an image generator in Poe, they're all in Poe, that can also generate text very likely uh, with good accuracy. So if I typed on this image generator prompt, I want to see a boxer dog and I want him to have a collar with a name tag that says Rex, it could have achieved that if I'd asked that. I did not ask that, so it is not on this. Moving on up, we have the real photo. Then we have one called Playground version 2.5. This is a fine, straight on portrait of a dog and it's a boxer dog. So everything I asked for is roughly accounted for. The symmetry is a little too precise for me. You know, it is a portrait, they did what I asked, but it's a little, I don't know, it's not quite there for me in terms of realism, but it's closer than let's say the, the Dolly 3 like quite a bit closer. In fact, these might have had the same back end. It could be that Playground AI is using the same basis of images that Dolly 3 is using. Because look, this is Dolly 3, same image with Playground AI. Look how little the dog changes. I mean, he changed a little bit. This is the next one we're gonna use. It's called Stable Diffusion. This one is Stable Diffusion XL. And it made a dog. Here's Stable Diffusion Turbo. So it made a dog. This dog has a little less detail. Again, that jives with the concept of a turbo model of an image generator will produce a faster and possibly less detailed image as an output. Let's look at Stable Diffusion 3 Medium. So same concept as this image, but now this next image was made with a, a little more processing time. And I think it's reflected in small details on this dog. And we're gonna move on to the Flux again. This is Flux Pro. And I think they named Flux Pro accurately because this is a good looking image and Flux Pro is what produced it. So they did a good job of naming it. The professional model produces the best results. That makes sense to me. And finally, we have the number one, in my opinion, because we've been going up from the bottom in terms of realism to the most realistic. The most realistic today on Poe, by my assessment, is Stable Diffusion 3, period. That's the end of that sentence. And this is the dog I got out of Stable Diffusion 3. I really like the fact that it has some, they're not symmetries. Like when we look at, when we look at this dog, it's like if you took a mirror and put it on either side of him, this face looks like this face. That's that works, but this dog looks realer because he has that slight difference on one side of his face than the other. So, and he's also, he's almost at a slight angle compared to the straight on dog. So all of those things tell me Stable Diffusion 3 is where I wanna spend my time if I wanna make realistic images of dogs. You may completely get different results when you do your prompting based on what you're asking for because different image generation models have different strengths as to what they can reproduce for you. So all of that being said, we're spending our time today in Poe using Stable Diffusion 3 and Flux Pro. Those are our two AI image generator models that we're using. And we're gonna try to do things relatively consistently, meaning if we make an image in Flux Pro, we'll make the same image in Stable Diffusion 3. That'll help us get to understand the nuances that each of them offers when you take the same text that they're fed and get an image. So now that we've looked at the various dogs, let's go into Poe. I'm going to look at the section in the middle here and we're going to start with Stable Diffusion, but not Stable Diffusion XL. We want Stable Diffusion 3. Understands complex prompts, supports multiple languages, has improved spelling over Stable Diffusion XL. Let's, let's use this. And you'll note, it'll tell you how much it will cost you in computational points of your PO account per message. If you're on a free account, 
this one is already locked off to you because you must be a subscriber to get it. But if you're on a free account and you see one of these things that's exceeding your number of credits for a day, you're basically not gonna be able to use those until you get a free, until you get a paid account. But there are free models you can use and you can use your compute points on those and get similar results. In general, what we're gonna learn today, you can apply in a free account just as easily. The only difference we're gonna get is we get to use these models that are on the subscription account, so they might be a little higher in detail and maybe resolution. Maybe they will also be more adherent to our prompt. That's especially what it means when it says it is um, good at prompt accuracy. That's basically what it's saying. It's trying to tell you, if you ask me for a vase with a red ball and a green triangle and a blue square, I'll give you that as an image. Why don't we just type that? A vase, a clear vase with a green ball, ball in the bottom, a red cone in the middle, and a blue cube, I've got to go volumetric, um, on top near the X mouth of the vase. Okay, so as we're talking, we come up with an idea, we ask what it looks like to stable diffusion, and stable diffusion spends five to 10 seconds and says, does it look like this? And we say yes or no. It doesn't look like that, but it has the ingredients we asked for. If we have a little more refinement to give it, maybe we can get what we asked for a little more strictly. I'm gonna do one more thing. A a cylindrical glass vase into which a green has been placed. On top of that, green sphere is a red cone shape. And on top of both of those, is a blue cube. Well, it certainly got closer. It really did. I didn't tell it clearly that I wanted all of them to be contained within the vase. So in those two images, we refined our idea based on the first output and then asked with a new prompt for a better version of that image. You can keep doing the same thing with the same prompt. Like I can just say, send that message again. Don't change anything about it, send it again. And we'll get a different image. It will be different. It may not be better. It's different. And we can keep doing that. It doesn't cost much. Um, if you have a subscription account, that means you have a million compute points. That means you could generate, uh, what is that, 10,000 images in a month? So that should be enough. They're getting there, they're interesting. I can move on from this now because all we needed to do with that concept was see how good stable diffusion is at our request, our arbitrary image request. We're gonna copy it. And just look at the other image generator we have access to, which is called Flux Pro. I'm gonna look for it within the Explorer slash image generation. Go to Flux Pro. Let's type our same prompt. I'm just gonna hit edit, paste. And let's see what Flux does. So when we do this kind of comparison, we start to understand the strengths and weaknesses of different image generators in terms of what kind of things they know about. You know, does it know what a green sphere is? And what kind of things it doesn't know about? It has no idea how to make a dog wearing a party hat. That's an arbitrary example. I have a feeling it does know how to do that. This is interesting, and it looks like it even made this a transparent image, which is, even more impressive to me. I don't know that it did, but that gray background implies that maybe it's a transparent image. That's amazing, because now I could use that actually in something that needed transparency for that glass vase. Awesome. We now have a very brief understanding of how we would use an image generator. We would type a set of text into it that, gener that represents an image we want to see, and we'd, we'd hit enter and wait about five, 10 seconds. When we see the results, we decide if it's what we like or not, and we change it accordingly. 
if we do decide we like it, it's easy to just cl click this button right here. It says download image and say save it. It'll always name it image.jpg, which is annoying because now you have to rename it yourself. But that's a good practice because now you can name it accurately. So this will be flux pro image of vase prompt. Okay, so I'm going to do another concept that we did before, which is let's do a prompt with something we do recognize. In my case, a person in an urban environment in Southern California. So let's go to Flux, which is right here, and I'm going to copy an existing prompt I made. There we go. Copy selected text. Now let's clear our context with Flux, because in a chat, you can keep talking in the same context thread and say, hey, remember that image we made a little bit ago? Go do something like that one, and Nick can check your chat. But we're going to clear the context with this little button, and it's going to be like we talked to a brand new person who's never talked to us about anything before. But it still knows how to make images. So hey, Flux Pro, I'm going to hit paste. Let's see a happy person walking down the street. They're in a Los Angeles neighborhood. It's a slightly overcast day, and I'm going to change this from, 19, from the 2020s to 1930s. So you notice in this text, I started with kind of a brief idea of the overall concept of the photo. It's a happy person walking down the street. Then I added a comma and filled in some context for the scene. It's a Los Angeles neighborhood. It is a slightly overcast day. And it is the 1930s time period. Those are all separated by commas. Those are the things the image generator is going to look at and say, OK, I know what a happy person walking down the street looks like. I know what a Los Angeles neighborhood looks like. I know what a slightly overcast day looks like. I know what a 1930s time period looks like. And then it goes into its garage of images and starts mashing everything together. And when it's finished, it says, does it look like this? I'm not going to hold that because flux takes like 20 seconds. If this had been stable diffusion, it would have been made in like five seconds. Cool. There's a happy person walking down the street in a Los Angeles neighborhood. On a, it's a slightly overcast day, 1930s time period. The cool thing about making images using a prompt like this, where it's kind of a series of sections of a sentence, it's not so much a complete sentence, is now we can just take that sentence we wrote and change one of the things between the commas. And we can get a t an entirely different photo as a result. I'm going to say it's a, it's a night. It's not a slightly overcast day anymore. It is a night time scene. And this is going to be tricky. Nighttime 1930s photography? They needed a big flash. We'll see how it happens. Well, there we go. Look at how much light is around them. Now we did the basically changing of one bit of the sentence, and we get a totally different image. If we look at the image, we see that that guy is happy. We see it's a slightly overcast day, nighttime scene. Well, it's not, night, it's not an overcast day anymore. We swapped that for nighttime scene. And it's the 1930s. But what if we wanted it to be a happy person in the 1980s? Then all we do is change a single number. That, to me, is the value of an image generator versus using a true photograph of an event. The true photograph happened. Awesome. But that represented a specific moment in time, never to be evinced again. It doesn't always represent what you might be writing something about at the moment. So if you can use Flux to take what was an existing concept and say, dial it in for my specific article, let's say, then you've made a more impactful article because that image closely aligns with the text you're writing. They don't need to be passed off as real photographs. They just need to be illustrative of the things you're talking about. This guy looks nice and happy. I think he did a good job. And in this case, we've also learned that you can just change time periods, change the time of day. It, it's not, 
hyperbolic to say you can change anything about an AI image. So, so get out there and do it. It's fun as heck. And as I look at this image, I see that this guy is, he's centered, like his head's kind of in the center, but I'd like to see a close-up of him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the exact same prompt as before, and here's a tip in, in Poe. If you want to prompt the same thing you just did, press the up arrow. It'll load the last thing you typed right in. I'm going to change this to be a close-up photo. Photo of a, I'm going to say a close-up photo, comma, happy person. Okay, so now we're doing the exact same thing, but it should be a little closer. And it, the guy won't look the same because he's just a happy person. So we're going to get a new happy person. If we'd said we want a guy with, you know, curly hair and like a specific look, we could keep typing that into our prompt and mostly getting that same guy back. But even then, not a guarantee. Consistent characters are still a bit tricky with image generators. So now we got this close-up of this guy. Let's compare him with the other guy. Yeah. But what about a wide shot? Well, I think you already know what to do. We swap out a close-up with wide shot. And everything we're doing so far has been in Flux Pro. But these things will apply to Stable Diffusion just as well, because these are the basics of image prompting. So basically any image prompt that you are, any AI image generator that you are working with will mostly be able to follow the exact same rules we're learning right now. All right. So what about a helicopter shot? looking down on a and now I'm actually making a bit of a sentence because this is a little more context I want a helicopter shot looking down on a happy person walking down the street so we've kind of moved away from the putting things in brief commas and we've moved into more like creating a sentence and we will see what that gets us everything is just trial and improvement with image AI image generators. Yeah, I mean, that's a low flying helicopter if it got that shot, but it's a good look. And I like that there's actually almost art direction in this. Like it looks like an image that could have happened in maybe a cinematic movie. So let's take what we learned and let's use the exact same prompts we just used. A happy person walking down the street, Los Angeles neighborhood, nighttime scene, 1930s. Let's take that and put it into Stable Diffusion 3. So let's go back to Explore. Let's choose Image Generation from the Filters, move past Stable Diffusion XL, move to Stable Diffusion 3. And let's type our, let's paste our prompt, Edit, Paste, and hit Enter. I'm interested to see the differences between this prompt in Stable Diffusion 3 and the one we just got of the same prompt in Flux Pro. The person is a little creepy looking um, to me, but I think they got the aesthetic of a 1930s era camera perfectly. I think based on my use of large format photography, this is what a, a nighttime image could look like if it was shot in the 30s. Um, let's check the 40s. Like, let's just see them moving through time. Stable Diffusion is much faster than Flux Pro. Uh, despite having, I will say, relatively comparable image outputs, I find that Stable Diffusion's images generate three to four times faster than Flux Pro at this moment in time. But we're getting more wonk. When people just look a little, a little not quite, not quite there. Well, yeah, kind of like, uh, uh, what's his face from... Goonies. So let's back up. And we now are learning again why to use one image generator versus another. Because when we look at this same image, 
a happy person walking down the street, Los Angeles neighborhood, nighttime scene, not, uh, 1950s time period. When we look at that, because I already made that image in flux, let's go back to flux. So this was stable diffusion three. Let's scroll. Here's Flux's version of the 50s time period walking down the street. I mean, technically, this doesn't look like a 50s photo from its um, film grain aesthetic characteristics, but the background environments, etc., look relatively 50s, and the guy could be wearing 50s appropriate attire. He's pretty stylish for the 50s, technically, but it could happen. So. That was the other concept, was learning the different methods you can use to get different time periods as well as different, you know, aesthetics of, I don't even know what. Everything we just learned is the very most basic primer on how to make an image using an AI image generator. And you can do other things such as use ideogram. This is a, a particularly good at getting text right image bot. So let's take our last prompt we wrote. I'm going to paste it. And then walking down the street, I'm gonna say walking down the street past a Denny's restaurant. Because once something is in quotes, you will, you will be telling the image generator, hey, pay attention to these letters and put these letters in the order I've given you in my image. That's a Denny's restaurant. Look, it says it. Now, literally, it's not the same as the Denny's logo, but this is why you use Ideogram. Let's do another one without the Denny's restaurant, without the, um, we'll just say walking past the Denny's West restaurant. So that way we get a baseline, you know, for what it would look like if it didn't spend its time on writing text. Ideogram takes a while. See now, see how it added words here? Rest, it kind of makes it a text, and this isn't as good. This one's better because the thing I'm mostly looking at is up here, so my eye's distracted. I have one more bot to show you. It is Dolly 3. This is one that if you ever use chat GPT, Dolly 3 is how it gives you images. So let's hit paste and put our same exact prompt in and see what it gives us. Well, this is something. I kind of like this because it looks, it looks artistic. It actually looks as though someone might have made a composition using a photograph from a movie and then maybe a drawing or something. I like this. It's not a photograph. It's not passable as a photograph, but it certainly is useful in the right context. And is there anyone else? Well, okay, let's do one more. It's a test. Let's go back to explore image generation. Let's do a test with one of the turbo image generators and let's hit that same uh, prompt. So this is flux and that was really fast. Wow. Um, and it's not bad. Let's see what the, the, the fast version of stable diffusion looks like. It would be called Stable Diffusion 3 Turbo. All right. Hey, that looks very good. That looks like young Frank Sinatra. And he's about to like star in, you know, Touch of Evil or something. So I think that was a good lesson. I, I think with everything we just discovered in these image generators in Poe, you have enough ability to start experimenting. So I'm satisfied that we got what we needed to do.
Thank you.